in academics as a researcher as a research supervisor as a research students whenever you think about the ethical practices one term always comes in front of you and that term is plagiarism we all know that there are a lot of concerns a lot of issues associated with this term and many people try to define it in their own way because there is no universal definition about plagiarism so in this video i am going to discuss about the basics of plagiarism that is what is the meaning of term plagiarism and what is the concept but before going to the meaning definition or concept let me share a few stories with you uh, a very interesting case was there in i am ahmedabad in 1992 when a student complained to its director on 17th august that when he was doing his summer project he has consulted four books for doing some modeling or data analysis the one book was statistics for management by leben another book was economic theory and operation analysis by bomai and a third book was principles of operations research by begner he has also consulted a book quantitative techniques for managerial decisions by u k shrivastav g v shonoy and s c sharma and when he was going through those books when he was browsing those books he found that the book written by shrivastav shonoy and sharma has a lot of stuff which has been simply lifted from the other three books and there was no citation there was no acknowledgement he wrote this to the director director framed an inquiry committee and the committee found that the book quantitative techniques for managerial decisions by shrivastav shenoy and sharma has copied some content without acknowledgement of the source at least at 10 different places in their book including five foreign books and some other indian books and interestingly all the books were published prior to the publication publication of the book by shrivastav shenoy and sharma this is not a one case let me share with you a very interesting case in 2002 seven professors of stanford university including four nobel laureates wrote a letter to then president of india our beloved great scientist dr apj abul kalam sahab and in their letter they accused a very highly ranked academician who was the vice chancellor at that time in a university that he has plagiarized their paper and it is a huge embarrassment for indian academia later an inquiry committee was set up by the governor of that state who was also the chancellor of the university and the committee found that the plagiarism charges are right and they uphold the plagiarism issue if you go through various newspaper reports i have gone through at least hundreds of the newspaper reports about plagiarism you will find that many places there were real cases and at many places there were some academic rivalry also i am not going to name anyone but you, if you go through all the newspaper reports or the articles in the internet you will find that in almost every indian institution a big institution also very famous institutions also the plagiarism issues are very common or were very common and at that time a very embarrassing article was in the online portal wire that in india you can plagiarize and flourish as an indian academician we all felt ashamed that what is this a very you know popular case happened in 2014 when a very senior academician from jamia millia islamia uh, was 
about to be selected for a particular post in a national body just before that one of her own research scholar accused her for doing plagiarism so sometimes you will find that plagiarism is also being used for academic rivalry when i analyzed all these newspaper articles i found that in most of the cases the charges are either the plagiarism of ideas and thoughts or the plagiarism of old published research work as the new by the same author or the plagiarism of data and process from a research paper into a different research paper this means that we need to think again what plagiarism is a very famous cartoon i have got on internet in which a student is complaining to his father that my teacher gave me an f on my report she accused me of plagiarizing of the internet the father is saying that's outrageous i will get her fired i stole the same report years ago from the national geographic magazine and i got a what can you conclude from these stories from these clips from these uh, cartoons that people are plagiarizing since long sometimes intentionally sometimes they are not aware that they are doing plagiarism and they got into the net of plagiarism later so the question is what is plagiarism again i will quote wilson manger who wrote somewhere that if you steal from one author it's plagiarism if you steal from many it's research but it is not true and the quote was again corrected as if you steal from one author it's plagiarism if you refer to many it's research so the difference between the plagiarism and research can be understood as the difference between stealing and referring university of essex defined plagiarism that plagiarism is using or copying the work of others whether written printed or in any other form without proper acknowledgement in any course work if you read the english oxford dictionary in the dictionary it has been written that to plagiarize is to take and use as one's own the thoughts writings inventions of another person so if we are taking anything from other person whether their thoughts their writings their articles their data their questions their process the figures and we are not acknowledging them and we are presenting it that it is our own we can say that we are doing plagiarism but plagiarism is not a new concept in the first century the latin word plagiarus which literally meaning is kidnapper was used by a roman poet martial to denote stealing of someone else creative work because someone has stole her poem and published it as his or her own later a derivative of plagiarism was plagiary and plagiary term was introduced in the english in 1601 by the dramatist ben johnson and ben johnson also was of the opinion that plagiary is a process in which you use someone else creative work as your own the term plagiarism later introduced in the english in around 1620 so if you try to define plagiarism you may not find a universal definition but you will find the similar characteristics in all the definitions here i am going to present you a definition given by the oxford university which you can found it on the website ox.ac.uk and i have taken verbatim from there that plagiarism is presenting someone else work or idea as your own with or without their consent by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement so all published and unpublished material whether in a manuscript printed or electronic form is covered under the definition of plagiarism it may be intentional it may be reckless or it may be unintentional but plagiarism 
is an academic cheating. Similarly, in the Stanford University, the term plagiarism was defined as the use without giving reasonable or appropriate credit to or acknowledging the author or source of another person's original work, whether such work is made up of codes, formula, ideas, language, research, strategies, writing or other forms. So, whether it is a definition of Essex or it is a definition of Stanford or it is a definition of Oxford, you will find that plagiarism has a lot of things common in it. And what are those common things? If we analyze all these definitions, we can enlist certain common characteristics of the term plagiarism. Plagiarism means copying or paraphrasing another person's words without giving proper acknowledgement. We will find that if we are adopting someone's idea or data without giving credit or without citing the source, this is also called plagiarism. So, you must understand that plagiarism is unethical and unprofessional practice and it is considered as a kind of academic cheating. How does it matter? In the Oxford University website, it is very beautifully written that why plagiarism or discussion or consideration about plagiarism is important. Because plagiarism is considered as a breach of academic integrity, as an honest intellectual or as an honest academician. One has to acknowledge his or her debt to the originator of the idea, word or data, which form the basis of their own work. Suppose I am writing a research paper and I am using someone's idea, someone's definitions, someone's concept and not only in the research paper, if I am even delivering a lecture and I'm, if I am using someone else word, someone else paragraph, someone else concept, we need to acknowledge that from where we have taken these words, from where this concept has emerged, you may give your own explanation to it. Explanation may be in your words, but this does not mean that if your explanation is original and concept is of someone else, then you will not give the credit to the originator of that concept. So, passing off another's work as your own is not only a characteristic of poor scholarship, but it also means that you have failed to complete a learning process which tells you about academic honesty. It is unethical. And you may have a serious consequences in your future career. You may do plagiarism today, but your publication will remain in the public domain for years. Maybe after 10 years or 20 years, someone will come and ask you, what have you done at that time was a plagiarized work and that can be used against your progress, your career progression. And if a case of plagiarism is found with any faculty or any researcher in an institution, it also undermines the standards of that institution and the degree which that institution issue. So, it is a very serious concern, a very important concept as a researcher, as a research supervisor and as a research student, we all should be aware about it. But the question is that whatever is there in the web world or in the books, everything need to be cited. When I am not citing something and it is not coming under plagiarism and when I am not citing something it will comes under plagiarism. It will come under plagiarism. So, it is also very important to know for you that what is not plagiarism? Common knowledge. Somewhere I have read that if something has been quoted hundred times without any particular reference or a particular citation in the known text or in the established text that become a part of common knowledge. The sun rises in the east, we never quote that who said sun rises in the east first, it is a common knowledge. General information that most people know, for example, water freezes at 32 degree Fahrenheit. So, water freezes at 32 degree Fahrenheit is a common knowledge, it is a general information which many people know. 
so you need not to give a citation that who told first that water freezes at 32 degree fahrenheit some cultural groups shared a common information like the names of the famous heroes the national holidays their dates that is not plagiarism if there if there is something which is very common in a particular field of knowledge and which has been shared by its members it is also not plagiarism for example if in the area of physics you will quote multiple places and you will read it that the necessary condition for diffraction of radiation of wavelength lambda from a crystalline solid is given by Briggs law so you never use that who has given the term wavelength or who has first introduced the symbol lambda because it has become a common knowledge of a particular learning field so i think that with this short description you will be able to understand that what is the concept of plagiarism what are its common characteristics and why plagiarism is important to know for a researcher for a research supervisor or to a faculty member i hope that this discussion will help you in developing your understanding further about the concept of plagiarism we will meet again in some other video in the course thank you very much